Well, it's specimen series time again, and it's something slightly different on this episode. So you find me at Suffolk Water Park. Now, most people who travel over to here fish for the big carp in the lake, but that's not what I'm fishing for on this trip. Like I said, it's something completely different, and I'm hoping to catch a nice big eel for the cameras tonight. I know very little about the stocks of eels in here, but there's definitely some to be caught. It's one of these venues where you have to pre-book your swim prior to arriving. So I've booked peg 10, and I've got a nice big marginal tree to my right, which looks good for a bite. And then my other two rods will probably be straight out in open water. But there's no great hurry to get fishing. Eel fishing is much better after dark. So I'm gonna have a slow setup. And before I get those rods out, I'm gonna talk you through the rigs that I use and my approach for catching these eels. just about time to get the rods out. But before I do, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hardware that I'm using, and more importantly, the rigs that I'm using. So I've stepped my rods up slightly in the last couple of years, and I now use some 10 foot, three pound test curve carp rods. Now they may sound a little bit overgunned for eel fishing, but anyone that's hooked a big eel will know exactly how strong they can be. And then on those rods, I've got some 6,000 size Shimano bait runners with some nice strong 15 pound line. Now here comes the important bit, the rig itself. So I've got a two and a half ounce lead and that's on a run ring. There's no resistance because eels hate any resistance. And that slides down to a buffer bead. And then this bit's quite important. I've got a ball bearing swivel on here. And the reason I've got that, when you hook an eel, they have a tendency to roll and roll and roll when they're fighting. And if that swivel doesn't turn around when they're rolling, they can break your hook link. And the hook link itself is a 35 pound coated braid. Now the only part of that's been stripped back is right at the end to allow me to tie the hook on. And now here comes the important bit. I can't claim any credit to this. This is what they call the twig rig. And there were some very clever eel anglers that invented this. I think it was a guy called Barry McConnell that invented it. And it's quite simply a hard plastic piece of tubing. And I've put this one between two float stops at the bottom of my hook link. And there's a little gap of maybe half an inch before I reach the hook. And what that twig does, when the eel picks up your bait, he won't take it any further than the bottom of that twig. So it's really important not to deep hook the eels and this pretty much prevents all deep hooking. And then on this rod, I've got a quick stop on the end there with a size eight barbless hook. And that is important to use a barbless hook because you want to make unhooking these eels as easy as possible. And on that quick stop, I'm going to put a few sections of lobworm and I'm going to fish that over some dead maggots. Once I've cast it out, it's going to be fished on a drop off alarm with an open bay alarm. So there's no resistance whatsoever. So I think I'm going to get this rod out because it's getting close to bite time and fingers crossed that we get one or two eels through the night. I've got one more rod to put out, and being this is on that nice snag down the margin, there's no neater way than putting it out with a bait and spoon. So I'm putting a mixture of some sort of part dead maggots and some chopped worms. And then the only difference with this rod, rather than the worm on it, I have got a little roach head on here. So hopefully that'll tempt an eel. 
and I can lay that nice and neatly down by that tree on the right hand side. plus all three rods out nice and neat for the night ahead. And that last rod, as you saw, I put out with the bait and spoon and I'm becoming a big fan of the bait and spoon. We used it on the series when I fished for big crucians and I'm convinced it got me a few extra bites. So hopefully, paying a little bit more attention to detail and getting it out with the bait and spoon will catch me a nice big eel. I'm not expecting much to happen until it gets dark. On these big clear gravel pits, they tend to be mostly night bites. Now there'll be a few of you watching this video that think, who in their right mind would fish for eels? But for me as an all round angler, they are the holy grail. A really big eel is such a rare fish. And the story behind them as well, I think it's claimed that they have to be about 10 years old to weigh one pound in weight. So if you bump into a fish that's five or six pound, a really big one, it's potentially 50 or 60 years old. So they, there's a little bit of mystery left in eel fishing. An eel of any size could turn up tonight and a giant eel can turn up in a farm pond or a giant reservoir. And it's just having something a little bit exciting. When that drop off falls off, the ifs, buts and maybes and what might happen. So I'm happy with those three rods. It's time to chill out now and wait for the sun to go down and hopefully we'll soon have an eel to show you. give it a go anyhow. Never know. Could be a five pounder hanging on the end. Well, there is one on there, yeah. Well that first bite took a bit longer than I thought but it doesn't feel like a monster. It's definitely an eel. She's gone into full reverse gear like they do. I'll have to try and find my land in that. Netting an eel can be a bit like netting a catfish. They have the ability to swim backwards, so. <laughs> well, it's only a little fella. But it was a bite and it's the first eel, so. Nice. Well, there we go, that twig rig has done exactly what I want to do. He's hooked in the lip there, so I can just gently, barbless hook came out really easy. And now here's the really tricky bit. I'm gonna try and hold him up and show him to camera. Well, there you go, I haven't, must be eel o'clock. I've just had that first eel, and now the middle rod's gone off, so. Let's see if this one's any bigger. It doesn't feel huge. Like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, the. The magic for me is not knowing quite how big they might be. This fella's even smaller than the first one, this one, but they're bites. First thing you've got to do is get a bite. Well, that first bite took a bit longer than I expected, and well, it must be eel o'clock. So I've had a bite on one rod, and we've literally just got that first eel in, and the middle rod's gone as well. So I'm going to do my best to try and show one of these to the camera, but it seems as if the bigger the eel, the better they behave. And these aren't big eels. These are very average size eels, but the first thing you've got to catch, or the first thing you've got to get, is a bite. So this is uh, one of the little fellas. And they are probably up there with grayling for uh, trying to show them a camera, they just don't keep still. But if we are fortunate enough to get a bigger fish, you will see that the bigger ones do behave a little bit better. And they're a similar size, one's a little bit bigger than the other, but I'm quite keen to get those rods back out because we are now into the prime bite time. I'm gonna slip these little fellas back. I think they are really interesting creatures. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea. But I quite like them.
he's there. Oh, there we are, there's another bite. I've been starting to doze off. This one actually feels a little bit better, but he's holding his ground a little bit, but you never know. <laughs> Here he comes. He's a little bit bigger. Hopefully he stays on. Sort of reverse away from you, then they shoot towards you when they stop swimming. There we go. <laughs> this is why you use a nice big carp net because it just makes it a bit easier to persuade them to go in. Come on, mate. Nice. Well, how about that? That's a much better reel. That one, that rod that I underarmed back out in the dark has clipped out and we've got, well, I'd say this is probably over three pound, this one that feels quite a bit bigger than those first two. And it is noticeable, this is one of the eels with the wider heads. And they do say that the wider headed eels prefer the dead baits and the narrow headed eels eat the baits like the worms and the maggots. So I'm really pleased with this one. That's definitely progress. And I apologize if there's lots of flies in front of the camera because they love that light, but this one is quite well behaved. So I'll take a minute to enjoy looking at it and I'll get that rod back out. It's going, it's still there. Well, hopefully there'll be one there. It's just clipped that at first light, so here we go. Yeah, we're into something. It doesn't feel enormous, but Nice to get a bite in the daylight. <laughs> Whoa. this one. He's there. I hope he's there anyhow. You have to excuse me if I'm a bit blurry eyed this morning. That was a fairly restless night for me. I had clip outs all through the night and I've had quite a hectic spell in the early hours. So they're quite a difficult fish to capture at the moment on camera. So I've held on to a few fish that I caught just before it got light this morning. So wish me luck. I'm gonna try and pick one of these up to show to the camera. There's nothing huge in here, but there's certainly some quite nice eels. How about that fella? There's two or three about that size. And I must admit, if, if this has convinced you to try the dark art of eel fishing, I can't recommend that twig rig enough. Every one of these eels that I caught last night were all lip hooked, which is really important. So I'm gonna pop these fellas back. I've got a lot of slimy fishing gear to pack away. But if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you don't wanna miss any of my future specimen series, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There you go, wait. That way. 